So Craig, this is an oxy-fuel machine here from Kerf Developments. Can you tell me about this particular model? Uh, this model, um, oxy-fuel machine, it can have multiple heads. It can be any width to suit uh, customers' requirements and it can be any length. Okay, now I'm going to put myself in, in place of an engineer who doesn't know much about this sort of technology or what oxy-fuel can do. Can you talk us through what it would actually do for a manufacturing company? Um, this process can be used from anything from 3mm right the way through to 600mm thick, cut with Octifuel. Okay, and we've got examples of parts here that would be done on this machine, we'll come back to those. If I just explore for, 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 for this stage the uh, extraction or the table that we've got here, yep. this is modular and can be built to any size depending on the component as you've said or the size of the plate but it's not actually attached to the the cross rail or the uh, or the sides no uh, the, the idea behind it is that when you're loading a plate and you drop on or you stack a truck driver drops a huge plate on there there's no shock loadings going to any of the frame totally independent okay okay and when we look at oxy fuel there's various different types of of cutting you can do plasma cutting laser cutting what sort of application would you use an oxy fuel machine on? Um, it can be a small fabricator who's got one oxy fuel machine and he just needs to cut a range of materials. It can be people that need to cut from say 30 mil up to 150 mil uh, and for those processes you could use water jet. Um, Plasma is getting near, near the top of, it, of its piercing ability. Um, well we'll come on to plasma in a minute but this particular machine here we've got two heads Yes. So you can have more than that, can you, or is you, it...? You can have as many as you, as you feel you need. So why would you have two or why would you have three? Would that mean you've got three of the same plate or the same uh, part on the table that you're trying to do the same operation on? Yeah, typically you, a machine of this size you would go with four or five heads. And, and the idea is that by doing so, as it moves along the bed of the machine, you're cutting five components in one go. Okay, so you're, you're essentially improving production by doing more than one component yeah. at once. So we've got a control here for the machine. What functionality does this provide and how does it work? Um, in, in a production environment, you would tend to, to program the parts offline. So you'd use a, a cam, cam package linked to some form of CAD system, uh, do all your nesting offline and then transfer on, onto the controller. Uh, this particular controller also has a series of parametric shapes so if, if you need a quick one-off of a, a base plate or a disc or a ring or whatever, you can just put all the parametric sizes into the controller and then just cut the one-off. So it's very simple to use? Yes. What sort of training would it take somebody to...? Um, typically an, an hour or so. Oh really? That, that, yeah. That's straightforward. So let's say for example, Craig, you've got two types of um, companies that would buy this machine. You've got one that already have this type of technology and use it regularly, or new users. If you were a new user, do Kerf offer any features and functions that would assist? Yeah, I mean, on this machine, for example, you've got a, an automatic height sensor. Right. So if the plate's been put on the machine at an angle, as the, the bed moves up and down the, the, uh, the machine, then the height will be set automatically. So that'll maintain the cut quality. Okay. And it's also got an, op an option there for an automatic ignition. So that's all done from the control unit. They, they don't, on, on a big machine, you don't have to come across an individual light every torch. Right, okay, okay, which is like you had to do in the old days, I remember, I remember it well. Absolutely. You have also mentioned another point about this table here. This is a luxury, is it, in the oxyfuel cutting arena? Yes, if you were to install this inside um, a factory environment, it would be like the Rolls Royce of cutting machines. Right. Uh, pe people tend to fabricate their own tables to suit their own applications. So you could just buy the cross rail um, and attach it yourself to what we see here is, is, is the floor essentially yeah I, and then I, I, either Kerf could supply you with cutting tables or, or people tend to be fabricators and they would make their own and what about fume extraction and things like that again is that another luxury uh, it is for Octifuel it's certainly not for plasma that's uh, it's mandatory really for plasma and what about importantly costs is there anywhere we can start and where it finishes uh, realistically it can start at about fifteen thousand pounds and it can go upwards to 70, 75, maybe 80,000 pounds for, for some of the bigger machines. And that would generally depend on the size of the machine and the amount of heads that you, you have? It can be the size of the machine, the number of heads, or the capability of one of the heads. Uh, for example, we've just sold a machine which can pierce 
through 450 mil and the customer believes it, it's got enough power to probably pierce 600 mil. Wow. And that's with a, a gas cutting machine. Wow. So that's a good point. Let's talk about some parts. So we've got three or two components here. Let's have a look at these. These are typical examples of what's been done on this machine. So this is one example, Craig. Can you talk us through what's been, uh, how this has been? Um, yeah, this, this is a part that we um, asked one of our customers to supply for us for the Mac show. And it's, it highlights what you, what you can achieve with oxyfuel cutting, but equally, I can't think of any other process how you would make that other than machine it. Right. So what have they done? How have they, how have they gone about it? Uh, they've taken this, which is probably about 100 mil thick uh, as, a, as a billet of material. They've profiled around the outside. Uh, then when it's cooled down, they've picked it up, mounted it vertically, and then profiled around the outside and put the hole in as well. Okay, okay. That couldn't have been done with any other process. So that is a prime example of a particular part that you need to do on this type of machine? Absolutely. Okay, and then the second part we've got there? Uh, traditional uh, standard oxyfuel type work. Right. Uh, it, it can be base plates, it can be uh, parts for a, a press tool. Um, and it gives us a good example there with the sort of surface finishes you can expect or the cut quality yeah. and also I mean that's as it comes off the machine right and then internally where we've got the diameters or the uh, the holes there you can see what you can expect in terms of the call it the concentricity or whatever you yeah. want to call it the hole okay all right that's brilliant well that's been a really good insight into the oxyfuel side thank you very much Craig